Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another game from Chessable Masters 2020. Uh, this is part of Magnus Carlsen Tour uh, and it's hosted on chess24.com platform. Uh, and today I would like to show you, uh, I think, the best game of yesterday where Maxime Vachel Lagrave, uh, who is number one uh, in France and number two in the world in rapid time control. So definitely rapid time control is favorite of Maxime. Uh, he's number two in the world and he's ranking 2860. Uh, Maxim is 29 years old and he's gonna play as white. And his opponent, Fabiano Caruana, uh, who is number two in the standard time control. However, um, in rapid, uh, number 11 in the world, uh, he's ranking 2773. Uh, he's 27 years old uh, Italian-American Grandmaster and he's gonna play as black. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. We have D4 by Maxim Vasil Lagraf, D5, C4 and c6 uh, slav defense and it's pretty funny because uh, actually maxim vasil lagraf this year he started to play quite a lot of slav defense as black so maybe he want to check you know uh, some variations what the best players in the world you know play um, in the tournament in the rapid time control as black uh, from the other hand, uh, Fabiano Caruana had a really interesting game uh, during the candidate tournament against Ding Liren. Uh, because uh, he sacrificed the pawn in the Slav defense and after a very, very sharp game, he just lost. Ding Liren uh, managed to solidify his position. Also very interesting. If you haven't seen that game, I really recommend this is one of the, the best games of the candidates tournament so far. And, uh, and this, this, was, this was really great. Uh, we have knight on f3 by MVL, uh, knight on f6, and now knight c3 uh, is the main idea here. e3, of course, is possible. Exchange variation, if you just want to go for a draw, uh, this is the best option to play, you know, against symmetrical pawn structure. But here, Maxim goes for a queen on c2. Uh, we have d takes on c4, queen takes on c4, and now bishop f5. And I would like to mention uh, one game where actually Maxim Vasil Lagraf uh, play against Ding Liren. Ding Liren very often plays um, Slav defense, one of his favorite uh, openings. Uh, and Maxim plays bishop f5 too early. And Ding Liren just crushed him after knight on c3 and, and attack d5 with the queen on b3 idea this was just crushing this is another slav defense game on my channel which i really enjoy uh, it's miniature but also very sharp very nice uh, and explains why to not play bishop on f5 uh, too early so you can check also over there after this game however in this position this is absolutely correct so um, fabiano caruana shows maxim okay this is the right moment when you can play okay when your queen is on c4 where you don't have the weakness on d5 this is the right moment we have g3 by maxim vasil lagraf we have e6 by fabiano caruana bishop g2 bishop e7 castle castle uh, and now queen on b3 very natural square for the queen and now queen on b6 uh, and this happens quite often for example in the slav defense where the queens staring at each other uh, and no one's want to, you know, exchange them. The point is, if you exchange the queen, uh, black gonna take and uh, the rook gonna be fully operational, uh, can join, can leave the the, uh, the A file and, uh, and, you know, come to the center and attack or attack from the, from the flank. So uh, that would be definitely in favors of black and vice versa. Of course, if black takes it, it's the, it's the same thing happen. So knight B on D2 with the plan of harassing the the queen and this was uh, played couple of times so the theory is well known a rook on d8 and now knight c4 as planned we have queen on a6 and this position was reached also couple of times uh, normally rook on d1 is one of the moves knight c4 
on e5 very natural and uh, moving the knight to this beautiful uh, outpost but the real problem is what to do with this bishop so a bishop on d2 was played in the past for example by hikaru nakamura but is it the you know dream square for the bishop definitely it helps to uh, to connect the rooks and then maybe the the bishop can come to e1 uh, however nobody played before on the top level bishop on g5 and this is what maxim played in this position so we can say it's the novelty however uh, it doesn't look like you know the best one knight b on d7 because uh, black of course don't want to to exchange the the bishop uh, for the for the knight without the knight on f6 knight on f6 is very important controlling d5 um so white not gonna you know uh push in the center easily uh, we have rook f on e1 now preparing any e4 moves uh, and now h6 so this is the problem with the bishop on g5 uh, the bishop cannot go to to h4 because gonna be trapped uh, so we have bishop on f4 as you see this bishop cannot find the, the right place also this move provoking uh, g5 but Fabiano Caruana said no I'm fine uh, I'm okay here uh, my position is already better and he could already play c5 which is one of the main ideas in the Slav defense also e5 uh, is playable but not in this position as the as the knight and the bishop controls uh, e5 and the pawn of course as well however c5 is definitely possible also it can be supported uh, with the uh, knight on e4 first or rook on c c8 and then and then c5 so uh, this plan is is very natural However, Fabiano Caruana has a different idea here and plays knight on b6. Knight on b6, uh, he wants to exchange the queens, which is not so easy as this queen is quite unhappy on a6. So uh, queen on a4 is coming. Knight on b6 also uh, blocking the queen from, uh, you know, taking on, on b7. Uh, so uh, just in some variations however white now can move the knight to this nice outpost so we have knight c on e5 uh, and now queen a4 as planned uh, bishop on d2 now uh, and now what to play next it looks like fabiano uh, could play knight on e4 it's very natural very strong move and asking the bishop hey buddy what are you doing on d2 uh, you really cannot find the better square uh, however Fabiano didn't go for that instead he played bishop on e4 so he was afraid of the bishop on g2 uh, which is some kind of you know Catalan bishop and can be very very annoying uh, so for example if c5 is played look at this bishop this bishop looking at b7 uh, can be very unpleasant so uh, so that's the idea we have queen on e4 by Maxim Vash Lagrave now knight on e4 and now b3 kicking the the knight so knight goes back on b6 so it cost couple of tempi uh, to Fabiano Caruana to actually exchange these queens but but this queen on a6 was was really bad so probably it was worth it we have bishop on a5 uh, pinning the knight and now rook d5 attacking the bishop and asking are you sure you want to you know exchange for this knight uh, because then i'm gonna have you know semi open file i'm gonna look at a2 uh, and you have to do something about that so we have bishop on c3 now uh, supporting d4 pawn uh, and now finally c5 uh, e3 by uh, MVL and now rook d on d8 as the rook in the center is not really the greatest idea you know uh, in the middle game we have rook e on d1 uh, and now uh, knight b on d8 so uh, bringing the knight to the center to this very very nice outpost it's also blocking any moves on d5 uh, in the in the future so uh, it's it's pretty nice of course it's attacking the bishop as well so bishop should be relocated uh, we have bishop on a5 now attacking the the rook rook d on c8 uh, and now rook a on c1 and now b6 so kicking the bishop and finally bishop gonna find the paradise square on e1 it doesn't look uh, really great but for now uh, you know this bishop has no better square so so e1 uh, 
you know, it works as well. Uh, we have a5 by Caruana, a4, so locking the, the queen side, uh, and now rook on c7, preparing to double the rooks on the c file, knight on c4, so remaneuvering the knights, uh, and rook a on c8. So, uh, very simple plan, uh, double the rooks on the c file. Uh, D takes on C5, so now opening also the D file as um, C file is taken, uh, and Bishop on C5. Uh, and here, Knight on D4. Knight on D4 with the plan of moving on B5 and harassing the rooks. And now, if the rooks want to move, for example, to D5, uh, then another Knight can jump to E5 and, you know, harass the another square on, on D7. So that would be very unpleasant. Uh, and also the bishop is under attack, but for now the bishop is actually uh, defended, so uh, probably black could play something like bishop on a3, that would be better, but we have bishop on g2, as, the, as I don't know, Fabiano Caruana is afraid of that bishop, uh, so we have bishop on g2, king on g2, it improves the position of the king also, uh, and now, of course, bishop d4, as this as this knight, you know, both of these knights can be very dangerous, so bishop on d4, rook on d4, and now knight on d7, so making the space for this knight and it's gonna be attacked by by e4 and it doesn't really have the the great squares you know to retreat so so better to to play this way uh, we have e4 as planned knight retreat to f6 and now rook c on d1 so maxime vachier lagraf uh, also managed to control uh, one of the open files uh, we have rook on b8 uh, because knight on d6 was coming uh, which could be unpleasant as this would be you know, remaneuvering with tempo, and look at this this bishop. Actually, it's pretty useful on e1 uh, because now b5 is not possible as the as the pawn on a5 would hang. We have f3, very important move, supporting e4 because e5 is coming. And uh, after the rook is moved, then of course uh, knight on e4 and the pawn, central pawn would be lost. Uh, and now we have king on h7. Uh, king on h7, and uh, what is the idea? Because if black uh, starts to play for the end game and let's say, uh, you know, attack the, the pawn on b3, the problem is uh, exchanging these rooks. Uh, and as you see, this pawn would not have support as well. So king on h7, knight on b6, knight on b3, and now rook d3 harassing the, the knight, rook c2 with check, uh, king f1, let's say, uh, and after knight on c5 attacking the rook and the pawn, uh, the problem is rook can go to, to c3, uh, and black would be forced to exchange the rooks and after bishop on c3 uh, white gonna win this pawn if it's defended then the knight also can join uh, and that would be much better for white uh, end game so uh, it's not really great so Fabiano first uh, place a king on h7 but now Maxim Vasil Lagraf starts his attack and plays g4 so definitely a h4 is coming maybe f4 is coming uh, and all of this attack we have g4 for now uh, e5 uh, attacking the the rook and here Maxim missed a very very nice move uh, he could play bishop on g3 uh, and in case e takes on d4, this is actually, I think, the best move in the position. Bishop on c7, rook on c8, bishop on d6, and now white gonna win this pawn and uh, probably the game. So, uh, rook on e8 also could be played, you know, trying to support this pawn. The problem is h4, you know, g5 is coming and uh, you, at the end, you have to take this, this rook so, uh, and give up the pawn. Otherwise, you know, if you play anything else, g5 is coming uh, and this knight, if the knight is moved, then of course you're gonna lose the, the knight uh, and the game. So, a very nice idea could be executed here, bishop on g3, however, uh, Maxim, probably low on time because, you know, it's rapid uh, time control, uh, you cannot calculate all the variations, uh, we have rook on d6, uh, and okay, we have knight on c5, now going after, after the pawn, uh, but now knight on e5, so uh, it's now exchanging the pawns instead of just losing the pawn, uh, but all the initiative is on the, on the white side knight on b3 and here maxim could again go for the variations like rook on b1 uh, or bishop on g3 it's still very very powerful 
for example, rook on b1, I will show you the new variation. Of course, the idea is uh, to win the pawn on b6, but things can go very, very naughty. For example, knight on e8, then what are you going to do with the rook? Uh, so you still want to keep the, the eye over there. Then the problem is rook on c6, rook on c6, knight c6, rook c8. Uh, and after, let's say, knight on e5, rook c2 with check. Uh, and this bishop uh, on e1 is not really the greatest here, so probably bishop on f2. I know it's pinned, however, after the king move, for example, to g3, uh, this square is going to be controlled. So the knight not going to have the, the easy life there. So probably knight on c5 first and after rook on b6, uh, knight a4 and white stands, according to the engine, white stands better. However, black still have this counterplay. So uh, it's very unclear, you know, how to continue the game. So definitely rook on b1 was the possibility. However, uh, Maxim goes uh, for something, you know, more logical and play h4. h4 with the plan g5. Very, very simple. And uh, what to do? Fabiano tries to counter on the on the queen side, so we have b5, g5 as planned, and now this knight has to move somewhere. Okay, where to move the knight? Now, this is probably the last moment where Fabiano Caruana could try, at least try to save that game. He has, you know, difficult position already. Uh, however, after knight on e8 with the attack on the rook, if the rook want to stay on the 6th rank, which is which is pretty powerful, uh, then b takes on a4, creating this passed pawn uh, just for the for later because now it's too hot around the around the king. So after knight on f7, of course the knight cannot be taken because g6. Uh, forking the king in the and the rook, so it's not possible. Uh, but rook on c2 with check, and after h3, keep in mind that the pawn on h6 is already attacked three times. Okay, so uh, what black could do is king on g8 going after the knight, and I will just show you one of the you know funny lines here. Uh, g takes on h6. However, it's a uh, it's, it's not winning by white, but g takes on h6, king on f7, and now h7. Uh, the problem is this pawn cannot really be protected in advance, uh, so knight on f7, uh, and after rook on a7, king g6, bishop on g3 now, a uh, very important move. Uh, now this bishop can be very, very useful here. Uh, rook on e8, let's say. Uh, now luring the rook to the to the corner, uh, and after that uh, rook on g1, and this is already very very tricky position. You cannot, for example, play something like rook on d8 or any other slower moves uh, because bishop e5 with check is actually winning the game. This is forced checkmate. So king on h6. Uh, rook on g7 and with the help of the bishop that's gonna be uh, checkmate you know very very soon so instead rook on c1 now black would have to be very very precise to not lose the game uh, rook on c1 keeping an eye on the rook uh, if if making you know this devilishly tricky uh, checks and now white again would have to find the only move in the position bishop on e1 bishop on e1 with check uh, and now the king has to move king h6 and now white have to you know take the draw so that was a that was a chance as you see you can take the the bishop uh, but you know that's gonna be uh that's gonna be a threefold repetition and and of course the draw so definitely knight on e8 was was the idea not sure if if it's the if it was you know force draw probably mvl would find some other lines however uh, after knight on h5 is now a uh, much easier uh, we have knight on d7 and now what to play next your rook is under attack if you play rook b on b7 uh, the problem is knight on f8 king on g8 and now rook d8 okay knight on e6 is coming you're gonna you're gonna lose them the exchange and the game so probably rook on c2 uh, king h3 and now uh the problem is you're gonna be checkmated anyway okay so 
maybe make a space for the for the king but it's it's making a space for the king but it also opens the the dark squares for the bishop okay here is the problem so for example after knight on d7 king on g7 bishop g3 and you don't have really the great uh, you know way to stop the bishop uh after exchanging the the pawns a rook on c5 this is the only way to stop it uh, otherwise you're gonna be just checkmated on h8 okay you're gonna be checkmated there so uh knight on c5 knight on c5 bishop e5 and you are forced to play f6 uh, and after g takes on f6 knight f6 uh just you're gonna win the, the the material and the game you can you can defend it for for now but after rook on f6 rook f6 rook d6 this rook also gonna be be lost the knight cannot you know join because gonna be lost and and of course the game would be lost so rook b on b7 would be would be really bad so we have rook b on c8 by fabiano caruana and now a takes on b5 a4 b6 so we have two passed pawns which one gonna be first rook on b7 blocking and bishop on b4 so mvl saying okay you block my pawn i'm gonna block your pawn as well uh, we have knight on f4 with check king on g3 and now knight e6 knight e6 very nice remaneuvering the knight now the knight controls these squares key squares as you already know because the knight cannot jump to f8 uh, and the rook also cannot go uh, to d8 and now seems like f4 f5 is the is the most natural uh, idea here and indeed this is the best move in the position however we have king on g4 so mvl actually set up some trap what would you play as black you don't have much time you want to complicate the position what would you play uh fabiano caruana goes for rook on c2 uh, and here is the problem because he said okay uh, you're doing something with the king so i'm gonna you know check you from behind you're gonna go back i'm gonna go back uh, and you're not gonna do with your king what you what you want to do whatever you you plan uh, however the problem is uh, this is the losing move and it led uh, mvl uh, to uh, make very nice tactics so feel free to pause the video uh, and find the winning tactic for white while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So actually there are two ways. One is even more e effective and, uh, and entertaining, uh, which MVL didn't play. Rook on e6, Rook on e6, um, eliminating, you know, a uh, defender of these squares. So that's the idea. So, uh, black gonna lose the material so f on e6 is actually forced and after knight on f8 king on g8 rook d8 we already know what's going on here uh if you play king on f7 then a knight on g6 look at this knight on g6 checkmate is coming for example king on h5 and now checkmate is coming on f8 okay with support of this bishop that's a powerful idea and if you take the knight the problem is this is a checkmate okay so uh probably you would have to play g6 making a space uh however after g takes on h6 all you can do is throw some checks like rook on g2 uh king h3 and knight d7 this is just checkmate is coming so king on h7 knight f6 uh king on h6 the only move now bishop joins the party bishop on f8 uh and and yeah that's all rook on g7 uh rook d7 and that's gonna be a checkmate quite beautiful checkmate so you can throw the rook uh but then after g5 making some space for the king uh bishop on g7 and h5 this would be beautiful checkmate uh, so if MVL, you know, plays a rook on e6, that would be very, very beautiful. So congratulations if you found this way of winning that game. However, MVL goes for something requires, you know, less calculations and he plays g6. And now what to play? Take the pawn or don't take the pawn. So uh, Fabiano Caruana took the pawn. If he doesn't, 
then G takes on F7, King on F7, uh, Knight E5 with check, King on F6, F4, and now, uh, yeah, F F5 is coming, so the Knight gonna fall, and you cannot really, you know, defend it. If you try to defend it this way, let's say, uh, then Bishop on C5, Rook on C5, and uh, Knight D7 wins the exchange, so King on F7, Knight C5, Knight on c5 and after e5 white's gonna be up the exchange and of course uh, that that's winning still have this pass pawn on b6 so uh black have to you know make some babysitting here and uh, yeah that's that's just winning so uh instead we have king on g6 the problem is uh this is actually forced mate so if you found this one uh it's it's also you know quite amazing however not as spectacular as the one i i just show you with the with the rook on e6 so knight on f8 with check king on f6 is forced e5 uh, now if you if you try to escape on e7 you would get you know checkmated this way with the double check uh, also pretty awesome checkmate that would happen however Fab fabiano caruana of course takes on e5 uh, and after rook from the sixth rank to d5 moving to f6 uh, we have a checkmate so in this position uh, fabiano caruana didn't need to resign uh, he just got checkmated so uh, not often you know happens that you're gonna be checkmated on the board uh, very beautiful game especially you know last tactics uh, which appear on the board so i hope you enjoy it if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and of course if you don't want to miss uh, any other quality content press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one